and Ubuntu. Welcome, friends. Thank you for joining today. Really great to have you here. So this is our 10th news live stream. We do these every couple of weeks, every few weeks. Haven't scheduled the next one yet, but um, this is uh, an experiment, a work in progress. So I really appreciate it if you can give us some feedback on what you think is working well and what you'd like to see changed. Um, so that we can improve these and uh, make these more useful for everyone. My name is Dr. Michelle Merrill, and I'm going to uh, share with you a little bit of our um, recent news from the week with some commentary on that, specifically around um, eco-spirituality and eco-activism, that is, Uh, caring for the world both uh, from an inner sense and actively expressing that care in the world. Uh, We will talk about certain actions that you can do this week um, and some upcoming events that you might participate in. Uh, We usually like to try to share some ideas about eco-spirituality, practices that you might try to help deepen your own connection to the living world. Uh, And then we will close uh, typically with guided nature reconnection meditation. So we'll be together for about an hour. Hope you can stick with us. Uh, This is brought to you by Nova Sutras. Nova Sutras Uh, is a group that is enacting spiritual change through eco-spiritual community. We reawaken our deepest connection with the living world to reclaim our joy, to honor our pain, to grow trusted relationships, and to take meaningful action in service to all life. That action part is really important, and you'll see this has come up again and again in these new segments. Um, Part of the foundation of Nova Sutras was really taking to heart this idea expressed by Van Jones, that it's in the convergence of spiritual people becoming active and active people becoming spiritual, that the hope of humanity now rests. Indeed, the hope of the whole world depends on what we are doing right now. We are living through very critical and potentially transformative years. The faster we act on things like climate change, the less suffering there will be in the future. Every little bit of difference we can make now makes big differences for the coming decades and centuries, not just for humanity, but for all beings on earth. That's why I consider myself an activist. Part of how that was expressed last week was participating in an action at the headquarters of a large bank. Um, Wells Fargo has their headquarters in San Francisco. And Wells Fargo is one of the major funders of fossil fuel infrastructure all around the world, especially in North America. They are the biggest funder of the Mountain Valley Pipeline, which you may have heard about. Um, And they have the highest ratio of fossil fuel funding compared to funding for renewable energy of any of the major banks. Since we are able to gather uh, activists who are willing to um, risk arrest in San Francisco, and since the headquarters are here, this is one of those leverage points where pushing for change at Wells Fargo 
can make a tremendous difference in how many fossil fuel projects get built over the coming years and how many greenhouse gas emissions associated with that fossil fuel infrastructure are going to be expected in the years to come. So I went with uh, many of my friends, 19 of us were arrested. Um, I was part of the team that decided the most important thing we could do is hold the door open to make sure that um, none of this was secret, that people could speak their minds to those in power at this large bank. A large group went inside into the lobby and chained themselves together so that they could continue to make their demands uh, without being removed too quickly. Um, this team negotiated with the security and then the police as they arrived. Um, all of us uh, sharing this message that the lending that Wells Fargo chooses to do is such a critical place to intervene in this system so that we can reduce the harm from climate change. Now, in addition to this larger group in the lobby, there was a smaller team that was able to uh, cross the security barrier, get inside um, to where people were coming in and out, again, just so that we would not be ignored. And I'm very happy to be able to show you. Um, oh, uh, we did stay there until they removed us. Um, it's a very interesting experience to have one of your hands chained inside a metal barrel that is being cut open. Um, but I have to offer my thanks and gratitude for the respectfulness and care that was used in removing us. Um, we were there peacefully and they removed us peacefully, uh, by and large, um, taking good care to make sure that no one was injured. So I'd like to share with you now this video. Uh, realizing that it may not show very well unless I change some settings, so do bear with me. Try this now.
public about this. So we stayed until um, we had to be arrested and taken away. We stayed in good spirits throughout, um, chanting and singing even in the police vans. Uh, we celebrated what we had accomplished afterward. Um, this was in that sense, a tremendously effective action um, because we took care of one another, because we were there um, in full alignment with what mattered to us. We were there with a deep intention of nonviolence, of protecting sacred protecting sacred land, protecting sacred waters, protecting the atmosphere and keeping the climate stable. And that was our strength and that gave us courage. And being in companionship gave us strength and courage. So deeply grateful for everyone who put in so much work to do this, who stayed brave and um, who made sure that our, our messages and our questions could not be ignored by this huge corporation. I also want to talk a little bit about some of the other um, public demonstrations that you may have been seeing recently. Um, as we talked about in our last news live stream, this is a time when people are taking to the streets. There are so many urgent issues that leaders around the world, whether corporate leaders, political leaders, are not responding to. And so in addition to these climate actions that we have been um, invested in for, for years, um, there's also the response to the current crisis in Israel and Gaza. Uh, and just this weekend, all around the world uh, were gatherings to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. As climate scientist Eric Holthaus said, on Saturday, one of the largest global anti-war rallies of the 21st century took place in dozens of cities around the world, with some 300,000 people estimated at the march in Washington, D.C. Just to share with you some images from the march uh, near where I am in San Francisco. Um, okay. Continuing this quote from Eric Holdhaus, he says, more than 10,000 civilians have died so far in the Israel-Palestine conflict. And he makes it clear that this is about climate justice. He says, climate justice campaigners marched in solidarity calling for a ceasefire and drew clear parallels with what's happening in Gaza to what's happening all over the world where marginalized people are being forced to bear the brunt of climate chaos. And just to remember, just to reiterate that uh, 
war, bombardment. He is doing tremendous harm to the living world. That a lot of the tension and frustration in Gaza and the West Bank is related to access to food, water, and livelihoods. That these are even more extreme um, with the Israeli response to the terrible terrorist actions of last month. War is all about suffering. We can make much better choices than we are making now. We can find ways to resolve conflict that don't involve violence, that don't involve the death of hundreds of children. So peace activism, activism calling for a ceasefire, this is activism on behalf of, of Earth. This is sacred activism. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the actions related to um the call for a ceasefire a little bit later on when we talk about ways that you can um, engage in activism yourself. But I want to talk about another protest that's been going on. This is something that had been planned months ago, where people all around the world have chosen to take on hunger strikes to demand more effective and urgent action to slow the climate crisis, to stop the expansion of harmful fossil fuel projects. There are people in Kenya, in Democratic Republic of Congo, in Uganda, in Chan, who have chosen to go on hunger strike with the, this global wave of climate action. Now, as I talked about um, in a blog post last year about sacred activism. Some of these actions that risk self-harm are challenging when it comes to true nonviolence. One has to think very carefully about not only the effect on your own body and the truth that that is harm to one individual who deserves opportunities to thrive and be healthy. But also the ripple effects, the, the sense of harm that others experience. So a hunger strike is not something to undertake on a whim. It is something to consider very seriously and to discuss very deeply with your community. Nonetheless, there are other ways to support those who have chosen to take on a hunger strike. Some of it, what I've just been doing, of talking about it, of bringing it up, of calling attention to the fact that there are these people who are willing to go to that length to take that risk because of how important it is because of the suffering that is already happening. They felt it necessary 
to take a more dangerous stance, to go farther out on a limb and say, this has to cease. And you have to understand the level of suffering that is going on. And the way I can illustrate that is by taking on that suffering myself. Nova Sutra's support for this action has mostly been around offering global synchronous meditations. And so there was a recent blog post about that. Um, and you can go there to learn more uh, about when they're happening and to participate. Actually, I think right now I should take us into oh. I'll take us next into talking about other actions you can take. Uh, the first one I would like to share is one that you can do really from anywhere in the world, and that is a simple signing of a petition. So Certainly don't expect that most listeners here are ready for a hunger strike. But I want you to think about what action you might be ready for. Reload this. There we go. Um, so, Rainforest Action Network is offering a simple online petition that could make a huge difference. The largest meat producer in the world is driving deforestation of rainforests, particularly in the Amazon. Again, the financiers, the people who are loaning money, have a lot of leverage to change this. So the petition here is actually directed at Citibank and Bank of America to stop offering financing to JBS Foods. So I really encourage you uh, to sign this petition if that is something that moves you. So that's a simple action you can take. If you're in San Francisco, or if you can get to San Francisco on November 12th, at least, I encourage you to get involved in the resistance to the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Um, this is a gathering of world leaders, both political and corporate, um, including representatives of countries with human rights records that are not good, um, including a lot of places where they are uh, suppressing workers' rights, where they are allowing environmental destruction so that businesses can operate more cheaply. So this is very much a climate justice issue, a workers' rights issue, a human rights issue. A great convergence of people are um, resisting these closed door meetings between leaders, making profoundly undemocratic decisions that will affect lives of literally billions of people. It's 
So there's a place to RSVP. You can find out more at Bay Climate Action has a has information about this. Um, there are rallies actually coming up just in a couple of days in San Francisco and um, additional actions on November 15th in San Francisco during these trade negotiations. Uh, here's where I wanted to get to also. So another action that you can take, even if you're not in the area, that has to do more with the, um, the calls for a ceasefire. Uh, you may have heard that a couple of days ago, a group in Oakland um, tried to block a U.S. Uh, military ship that was headed to Israel with weapons. Um, many were arrested. Um, as far as I know, I I'm, I'm, I'm apologize, I don't have a lot of details on this, but there was a call to help uh, these protesters. So if you want to uh, donate rather than being able to participate in an action like this, um, you can, uh, this is the, the next slide, you can go to this Venmo at Defund Genocide or PayPal uh, Critical Resistance um, and add the note, no military aid in your donation. Uh, my understanding is that um, yesterday or this morning even, this ship got to the same ship that they were able to slow down for a while at Port of Oakland. Um, eventually, of course, they were removed and the boat left, uh, but it was going up to Tacoma, Washington. And my understanding is another group there is also trying to slow it down. This may, in fact, still be in progress right now. Um, another action you might consider taking is, uh, that, okay. Another action you might consider taking is to write to the Secretary of Energy, this is to, uh, primarily for U.S. citizens, um, you can write to, a letter to the Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Uh, Bill McKibben just um, sent out a newsletter noting that the U.S. is planning to quadruple the export of liquefied natural gas from the Gulf of Mexico over the next few years. The emissions associated with these exports would wipe out every bit of progress the U.S. has made on reducing carbon and methane since 2005. McKibben goes on to note, along the way, it will hurt not only the people who have to live and breathe near these monstrosities, but also all American consumers because exporting gas abroad drives up the price at home. Um, so, um, I will include in the description the address for writing to uh, Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, and um, some of the key points that Bill McKibben recommends, noting that uh, these new plants are um, such an important Potential, you know, such a, a huge potential source of greenhouse gas emissions uh, that the U.S. is already the biggest exporter of methane on Earth. We already have more than enough capacity to meet the needs of Europe in the wake of the Ukrainian war and the uh, restrictions on Russian exports of methane. Um, these projects are an environmental justice travesty. They're going to be um, located closest to poor communities of color 
along the Gulf of Mexico coast, um, which of course is uh, where hurricanes hit on a regular basis. So again, I will put a link to some information about that in the uh, program description shortly after uh, the live stream here. Uh, so you can find out more about that. Next, I want to talk you through some of the um, mostly online uh, eco-spiritual events. Uh, through Nova Sutras and related groups. So let's share the screen. Here we go. Uh, so, and apologies, I haven't had a chance to update the website yet. So there's a few out of date things here. Uh, we are currently uh, recording this on November 6th. Um, tomorrow morning, is our celebration for the cross quarter. So if you're in North America, it's tomorrow morning. I see Carrie's with us uh, in Australia. So that'll be um, uh, middle of the night for you <laughs> tonight, I think. Um, but we're doing um, we're doing this online via the Inside Timer app. This will be a 90 minute session where we uh, lead folks on a guided meditation. And then we will uh, focus some time on uh, one of our favorite practices for these mid-season points, the, the cross-quarter, uh, this precise moment when the sun is um, in between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. Um, so that's that's why this is happening when it's happening. Um, and one of the things that we like to do on these, these cross quarters, these mid-season points, is to offer spicy blessings to uh, people that we most hope and wish would change. So for instance, um, to the CEO of Wells Fargo, I believe his name is Scharf. I will follow that up later. Anyway, but I can picture his face. And I want him to become a climate justice advocate and to radically transform Wells Fargo. So I am offering him this blessing that he might abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu and make that change. So uh, we'll be doing that practice together for the cross quarter. Uh, if you can think of some spicy blessings and want to offer them, either when you come with us or uh, in the in the chat or in the quote, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, in the comments, uh, if you're watching this as a video recording, please check that out. Also coming tomorrow is the monthly live network meeting at Deep Transformation Network. Really recommend these. The one this month is going to focus on um, transforming legal systems to help us redirect them toward an ecological civilization. The day after that, and also on November 21st and November 28th, California time, um, I'll be offering uh, these meditations for regeneration. So that's online via Zoom. You can also find them on the Deep Transformation Network. And um, the links, of course, are also at novasutras.org slash events. Um, other things coming up from uh, the rest of our wonderful eco-spiritual communities. There is a Ministry for Earth meditation session. Um, on Thursday the 9th, there will be a circle of practice um, with Deep Transformation Network uh, reflecting on that monthly live network meeting. And right after that will be an offering on inner development goals, focusing on practices that help us to build our 
capacities for empathy and compassion. So highly recommend those. They're they're beautiful gatherings. Um, For Buddhist practice, there's an online earth holder sangha on Sunday. And of course, as I said, um, not online, but if you can get to San Francisco, there's a what should be a huge rally um, the day before this uh, APEC, the Asia Pacific um, Economic Coalition Summit begins. Uh, Monday the 13th and every Monday, um, People versus Fossils, Fossil Fuels and Build Back Better. Um, or I'm sorry, Build Back Fossil Fuel Free, I believe is their organization, uh, do a general conversation. Um, on November 14th, I will do a meditation for the new moon, the emerging new moon, which actually happens the day before, but um, be busy. Um, also, there is a, another listening space, I believe, scheduled on Deep Transformation Network. November 15th is another big uh, call for actions in San Francisco. If you want to find out more about that, get in touch with me. Um, Following Thursday, there are a couple of wonderful book discussion groups that are happening at the same time. Um, One is the uh, Palo Alto Climate Change Book Club, and I'm forgetting right now what book they're they're talking about. but. The other is through our friends at the Guy and Way, and we'll be in discussion with author Ursula Goodenough talking about her book, The Sacred Depths of Nature. It should be a really, really juicy conversation. Um, So much to work with uh, in Ursula's book. So I really encourage you to get the book and read it before that if you can, uh, or if you've already read it. Uh, This is the second edition that was just released. There was an edition that came out, um, I believe, almost 20 years prior. Uh, So we'll be talking with the author, Ursula Goodenough, um, on a week from Thursday. A week from Friday on Inside Timer is a loving kindness, global synchronous meditation. I will get more details about that posted uh, soon, so you can look for that. Um, this is a local one, but if you happen to be able to get to Santa Cruz, there's going to be a really wonderful thing on November 18th, uh, honoring Indigenous voices with uh, people discussing the work of the Amamutsan Tribal Band. Um, and that's at the Resource Center for Nonviolence in Santa Cruz. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to do my next live stream. I may do it on Monday the 20th, uh, but I may have to wait for a week or two. Um, So just being aware that Monday the 20th is World Children's Day. So if um, I would I would guess that there's going to be some peace activism expressions around that. So look for those again on uh November 21st, offering another meditation for regeneration. Um, That Thursday, the 23rd, is another uh, practice space, co-creation practice space on Deep Transformation Network. Um, Okay. Uh, I think that's all of the calendar stuff that I wanted to share today. Um, another link that I will put in the description is uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about a very simple practice that can help us to reconnect with nature, be settled, and find strength. And that practice is something that I have, ooh, I've been practicing um, 
for about 10 years. And that is wherever it is that I live, um, finding a local tree that I can make friends with. I know, it sounds kind of woo, but don't worry. The practice here is simply to find a tree that appeals to you, that you can get close enough to, to be under its branches, maybe touch its trunk or some of its branches, and that you can get to often. It doesn't have to be every day, but a couple of times a week is pretty good. And then to do that, to make sure that you visit that tree a couple of times every week. See what's going on there. Spend at least four or five minutes, ideally mm, 20 minutes, half an hour. It can be a spot where you meditate or just spend some time observing, seeing what is going on in the life of that tree how it changes from week to week, how it responds to challenges in the environment, what other kinds of beings come to visit it. Really get to know its presence, understanding tree pace and how different that is from the human pace of life. Breathing with that tree, taking in the gift of its oxygen and giving it the gift of your carbon. If you are breathing, speaking, chanting, singing under a tree, the tree is capturing the carbon dioxide that you exhale and with this unbelievable, some would say almost miraculous process of photosynthesis, combining that carbon dioxide with water it's drawn up from the soil and with energy from the sun and creating the molecules that become its own structure. breath you offer, the words you speak, actually become part of the body of that tree. So it's well worth being good to your friend, spending time there, forming that relationship. And that takes us into our closing, which will be a simple guided meditation to help you reconnect with the living world. So I invite you to get into a comfortable position. Let your body really get settled. You can be sitting, lying down, standing up, whatever's going to feel good for your body right now, whatever works for you. And you can soften your gaze or even close your eyes. Finding the comfort to turn your attention inward. Finding the stillness at your own center. And noticing that even that calm is not perfectly still. Our bodies move and change with every breath.
Feel the breath. From where it enters and leaves. Going into your nostrils. Back out. That exchange of air. Where some of the atmosphere moves into you to become breath. And then you let breath back out to become atmosphere. And I invite you to envision that you are doing this now, leaning against a favorite tree. Sharing breath with that tree. Inhaling what it exhales. Exhaling what it can inhale. Feeling the solidity and stability quiet patience of that tree. Perhaps it relishes that feeling of an animal breathing near it as much as us human animals relish the freshness of breathing beneath a tree. Envision what that tree looks like on a warm summer day. on a cool day in autumn after the rain. What does that tree look like in the depth of winter? What does that tree look like moving in spring breezes? Take another deep breath. And allow your exhalation to be a gift to that tree and all trees all around the world. And as you welcome in your next inhale, you might thank all of the trees around the world for the beautiful gift of oxygen they provide to us, to the birds and butterflies, to the squirrels and monkeys, the lizards and the ants, lucky we all are to live in a world blessed 
with billions upon billions of trees. May all tree beings thrive. May all the animals who appreciate and rely on them thrive. May we learn living together in peace from the slow, gentle wisdom of trees. Feel that strength, that patience rising up through you being shared with you by that tree, that you can be strong, patient, courageous, that you can offer your gifts to the world. Feel that possibility shining forth from your heart center up to the crown of your head that you might make wise decisions to your mouth and throat that you might speak words of peace, truth, and loving kindness. Out along your shoulders and arms and down to your hands. That you might do the work of creating a more peaceful, beautiful, abundant future where all beings can thrive. And down your trunk, down your legs, all the way down to the soles of your feet and the tips of your toes. That those legs and feet might help take you to the places where your gifts, your presence is most welcomed and most needed. Now start to bring a little motion to your feet and hands, wiggling your toes and fingers, moving your ankles and wrists, then moving your arms and legs, shifting your hips, your shoulders, your spine, neck, and bringing your attention back up to your head, Gently open your eyes a little wider and allow your gaze to focus on something beautiful near you. Favorite color, light coming in the window, maybe some flowers or a plant or companion animal in your house, whatever it is. Welcome that beauty in as a reminder of all of the peace and joy that is possible in this world. Thank you for your good intentions, your good work, for your actions, and for the loving kindness that you offer to others in this life. We'll see you again soon. Ubuntu and Agaya to you. I want to thank you for being part of this practice. 
um, or learning more about uh, Nova Sutras and eco spirituality, the actions that you have opportunities to take. Again, I'll be updating the links in the video description um, uh, in over the next hour, I hope. Uh, so that should be available soon. Um, you can always go to novasutras.org slash events um, to find out more about uh, things that are coming up in the world. Um, I want to thank Nova Sutra's Patreon supporters who have made this possible and, of course, encourage those who are not yet supporters to join us. Thank you for meditating with me today. And thank you for taking action on behalf of life. As you work to heal the earth, May the earth truly heal you. Um, thank you, everyone. Ubuntu and Agaya to you.